Who's that kanji? It's say. So today we're going to look at the kanji for say. This is so far the most complicated kanji that we've covered. Uh, it's it has seven strokes. So the kunyomi are you, uh, and here there's a dot, which means that u goes outside. This will happen with all verbs in Japanese. You have a part that stays inside the kanji, and then the part that goes outside of the kanji. That is because the part that goes outside is going to be changed. Like you can have you, or you can have iwanai, which is the negative of that. So that will happen with all verbs. There will always be some part that goes outside. The next reading is koto, and the onyomi are gen and gon. But for today, we'll only need the reading you. And the meaning of this kanji is just say. So now let's look at the stroke order. So the first stroke goes like this at an angle. The next stroke is going to be a line like that. These two don't have to be touching. And then you have a line like this. And then uh, another line, pretty much the same. And then here you draw the kanji for mouth, except it's a bit squished down. You might notice that here I drew these vertical lines at a bit of a slope and same here. That is normal for handwriting. Like on a computer, it'll always be a perfect square, unless there's a, a specific font that you're using. Uh, but in handwriting, uh, you can draw them kind of sloped like that. So it kind of goes inside at the bottom. You don't really need to worry about that. If you draw it as a square, it's fine. But something that you really need to pay attention to is that that first stroke is written like that. You will often see it. Actually, even in the thumbnail of this video, it's going to be drawn like that because of the font that I'm using. It's written like that on a computer. That is not correct for handwriting. It's just a nice way that you see on a computer but do not write it like that. So let's do that again. First, we have this line that goes out of slope. Then all of these horizontal lines from left to right, as always. And then we just have the part that means mouth. Here it goes down, right and down, and then left to right. So now let's look at how you can remember this kanji. So I think this should also be quite easy to remember. So you have this part that means mouth here. And then these are like the sound waves coming off of it, right? So it's a mouth that it has sound waves coming off of it. That means that someone is saying something. So today we only have one example word, which is you. Uh, again, the U goes outside here. And this means to say. So let me give you a couple example sentences for this word. So the first example will be gochisou sama to inasai, which means say thank you for the meal. Uh, which is something that a parent might say to their child. Uh, inasai is like a way to speak down onto your children, or if you're a teacher, you can use this construction to speak to your students. I even covered one example with this construction in a previous episode. I don't think this should be too difficult. We just change the u to i and then add nasai. And if it is a group two verb or a ru verb, then you would just drop the final ru and add nasai. So taberu, tabe nasai. I'm not supposed to be teaching you grammar, but this is a short episode, so I figured I'd just explain it. So the next example can be konnichiwa to imashita, which means I said good afternoon. Maybe you're just telling someone a story and you can use something like this. Something something to imashita. I said something. So that's about it for today. Do you know this kanji? We'll see what it is in the next episode. Subscribe here so you don't miss it and check out the playlist with all of the episodes. Mata kondo!